ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته welcome back uh, once again brothers and sisters to the tafsir of the quran we are still going through tafsir of surah al-kaf and we have uh, reached beyond the half of the surah so a few things to mention that we took in the previous class is i wish our students to to note that when the hut in the story of musa alayhi salam and uh, uh, his fata Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the fata did not mention it to Musa alayhi salam it was only afterwards that he mentioned it so from this scholars in Islam they say it shows ta'addub ma'al mu'allim it shows that when a student understands the rank of a teacher that the teacher uh, that the student uh, shows uh, this respect to the student. So the, the Fatah Yush'a bin Noon in this story, he did not wake up Musa alayhi salam, even though he saw it. He saw it during the night, as some of the scholars have said, but he did not disturb his teacher. He let his teacher sleep, and once his teacher woke up Musa alayhi salam, then he said what he said. So here we learn that it is for, from the student to make sure that they show respect to the teacher. Not just from an Islamic perspective, the elder, but anyone that has knowledge. Even if, and this is very important, even if they are younger than you, if this person has knowledge, we respect them for the knowledge that they have. If a person is a Hafid al-Qur'an, if someone younger than you has the Ashra Qira'at, the 10 uh, ways of re reciting the Qur'an, if someone has memorized more Qur'an or Hadith than you, then we, res we show respect to these people. <clears throat> Another point uh, that is uh, worth mentioning is that, and we'll uh, reiterate this later on, is that the patience that Khidr alayhi salam, he shows Musa. There's three occasions. And this teaches us as Muslims that when we deal with people, we need to be patient. If you are harsh with people, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat you and the way that Allah azza wa will judge you. If you are easy going with people, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be easy going with you. And this is not the only case uh, in the Quran that it is showed. If you remember the story of Yunus alayhi salam, Yunus alayhi salam, when Allah azza wa says, Ida baqa ila al -fulki, the, when Allah azza wa mentions the story of Yunus alayhi salam, the scholars of tafsir they say, فَسَاهَمَ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُلْحَضِينَ That they threw lots. And they threw lots three times. The first time, it fell on Yunus alayhi salam. And they said, it can't be Yunus alayhi salam. Because he's a righteous person. He's a good person. They threw it uh, another time. They threw it another time. And they said, it can't be Yunus alayhi salam. The third time it fell on Yunus alayhi salam, they said, we can't do anything about it. So this was Yunus alayhi salam. So from all these stories, we learn that giving people benefit of the doubt and being easygoing with people, this is the way that Islam teaches us until it is very apparent. So here we continue from verse number 76. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
قال ألم أقول لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا So now Musa alayhi salam and Khidr they continue their journey there's been the kharq al-safina the destroying of the boat and there's been the qatl al-sabi the young person that has been killed and now they're continuing and Musa alayhi salam throughout this journey he's asking questions he's saying why did you do this and Khidr alayhi salam he keeps saying لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ صَبْرَا You will not understand. There's an important point that scholars make here is that in our sharia, this is not uh, permissible. This is not permissible. For a person to act like khidr and to kill people and to act out of the sharia, then this is not permissible. Why is it not permissible? Because first and foremost, the Sharia of Musa is different from the Sharia that Khidr has. Secondly, both of these are prophets. One is a Rasul and one is a prophet. So they have knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning if someone comes today and says, you don't understand me. I am get getting revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is never accepted. This is actually the way of the Sufiya. This is the way that they speak. They say, you have the ilm of Musa alayhi salam and I have the ilm of Khidr alayhi salam. So they say, you don't understand me. And this is very dangerous because the Sharia of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam is one and the same. The ilm is from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. It's qala Allah wa qala Rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi salam. So there's no, there's no room for anyone else to come with their own understanding or to say, I received revelation from somewhere else. So this does not apply to our Sharia whatsoever. And then he says, Musa alayhi salam, he speaks to Khidr. He says, Qala in sa'altuka an shay'in ba'daha fala tusahibni. So he makes a final condition for Khidr. He says, if I ask you for something after this, فَلَا تُصَاحِبْنِي Then do not be in my companionship. Do not accompany me. قَدْ بَلَغْتَ مِنْ لَدُنِّي عُذْرًا You have reached a level for excuses, meaning there's no excuse after this. The scholars in Islam, they say, there's benefit in this. It shows, first of all, Make sure that you stay in the company of pious people. Khidr alayhi salam, after the first excuse, he could have said to Musa, Hada bayni wa baynik. Leave me alone. But he knew who Musa alayhi salam was. He knew that he, Allah azza wa jalla says in the Quran, wa kana inda Allahi wa jiha. That Musa alayhi salam has a very high status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he wanted to be in his company. And Musa alayhi salam wanted to be in the company of Khidr because he knew that he had knowledge that Musa alayhi salam did not have. So here the uh, companionship is very important. قَدْ بَلَغْتَ مِنْ لَدُنِّي عُذْرًا You have reached the level of excuses. There's no excuse after this. So like we said before, if a person gives you an excuse, then you understand them. You're easygoing. You don't hold people accountable for every single mistake that they do. You give them an, a, a, one excuse, two excuses, three excuses, as many excuses as you can. And there's this concept in Islam which is known as husn al dhan husn al dhan meaning to think the best of people. Because if you think the best of people, then they will think the best of you. But once everyone thinks the worst of others, if you think for a moment, I did this and people are going to think this, and you judge them accordingly, then this becomes a problem. فَانْطَلَقَ And they continued on their journey. حَتَّى إِذَا أَتَيَا أَهْلَ قَرْيَةٍ 
until they came upon a qarya, a people of a city of a village. They asked for sustenance. They asked for sustenance, food, and provision. And the people of that town, they refused to uh, give them, uh, the uh, uh, grant them uh, as hosts. Uh, then they found a jidar a wall that was about to fall فَأَقَامَ. and then Musa alayhi salam and Khidr alayhi salam both of them they firmly established this wall and Musa alayhi salam he said to the uh, to Khidr قَالَ لَوْ شِئْتَ لَتَّخَذْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا Perhaps because these people, they denied you any uh, food, maybe you can ask them for some reward, some money for the work that you have done. And here, brothers and sisters, there's a very important point. The ulama in tafsir, they say, all these encounters that, Khidr, uh, that Musa alayhi salam encountered, all these encounters that Musa alayhi salam faced they're all part of his journey his life so if we retrack our steps what was the first encounter the first encounter was with the safina some of the scholars they say musa alayhi salam in his beginning what happened to him his mother put him in in the tabut so in the same way that Musa alayhi salam did not uh, suffer the consequences of that action Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making history repeat to show him a lesson secondly when it says and in another qiraat zakiyatan bighayri nafs what did Musa alayhi salam do in the mistake faqabadahu Musa faqada alayhi fawakasahu Musa faqada alayhi that Musa alayhi salam he hit this man and this man ended up dead and then later on where Allah Azza wa Jal mentions about the uh, the jidar and Musa alayhi salam here in this context is saying لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا if you remember about the uh, the people of Madian what did Musa alayhi salam do Musa alayhi salam he helped امرأتين تدودان the the two women that didn't have anyone else to help them did he ask for any ajr? He did not. So all of this is history repeating itself to teach us a lesson. So all these consequences, whenever you see history repeating itself, the scholars in Islam, they used to say that this is for us to learn. فَجَعَلْنَاهَا نَكَالًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا وَمَا خَلْفَهَا وَمَوْعِظَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ so when history repeats itself, it is for us to learn. And then finally, to conclude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ هَذَا فِرَاقُ This is the moment that we will separate. Meaning Khidr alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam, they will not continue. In the ahadith of the Prophet them, he says, I wish, I wish that Musa alayhi salam would have had more patience so that he would have learned more from Khidr. But Qadr Allah ma shafa'al, this is not what happened. So they parted uh, ways. But before they parted ways, Allah Azza wa says, سَأُنَبِّئُكَ بِتَأْوِيلِ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ سَبْرًا 
I will inform you of the things that you were not able to be patient with. Later on in the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا One is تَسْتَطِعْ Okay, so first is سَأُنَبِّئُكَ بِتَأْوِيلِ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا With a ta and a with a ta and a ta مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا And the second one is ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا And the scholars they say Whenever in Arabic there's more huruf, more letters, it shows more of a meaning. So whenever there's extra letters, it shows more of a meaning. So in the beginning, there's more uh, letters. There's a ta and a ta. Ma lam tastati' alayhi sabara. This the scholars they show, they, they, they say that it means the the anger of Khidr at that moment in time because Musa alayhi salam has been questioning him again and again over and over and because of his anger and his frustration with Musa alayhi salam he mentions things that are uh, that show more of a meaning and later on it becomes different and I mention this because it becomes easier for a qari of the Qur'an, a hafiz of the Qur'an to remember that once Musa is asking many questions, it is with a ziyadatul mabna, ziyadatul ma'na. And later on, Khidr alayhi salam, he says, ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْطِعْ عَلَيْهِ sabara. So it is different. So the first thing that he explains is, أَمَّا السَّفِينَةً as for the boat, فَكَانَتْ لِمَسَاكِينِ لِمَسَاكِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ فِي الْبَحْرِ فَأَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَعِيبَهَا So he explains the reason why he uh, destroyed or he caused the destruction of this boat. And he says, وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمَا وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلُّ سَفِينَةٍ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا That every a uh, boat that was going through this passage it caused the king to seize it meaning the king would uh, possess these boats and Khidr alayhi salam out of his knowledge he didn't want uh, for it to be the cause so he saw it better through the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cause it just, uh, destruction wa amma al and as for the young boy, فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشِيْنَا أَنْ يُرْهِقَهُمَا طُغْيَانَ وَكُفْرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to uh, Khidr that this young boy would be a person that would cause kufr and tughyan for his parents. Because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instructed Khidr alayhi salam uh, to uh, end this person's life and again like we said before this is not something that uh, a person can do today because there is no Anbiya and there is no Mursaleen فَأَرَدْنَا أَنْ يُبْدِلَهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا خَيْرًا مِنْهُ زَكَاةً وَأَقْرَبَ رُحْمَا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed to Musa, uh, to Khidr alayhi salam that Allah azza wa jal would change for him uh, for them, the parents, someone that was better uh, in terms of uh, the uh, the ruhma, rahim in Arabic, it is of two uh, meanings. The aslul rahim, the foundation of rahim, it is the womb, the womb of a wo uh, of a woman, meaning where the uh, the baby grows, and the rahim is also kinship kinship meaning that you are related through two ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran wa huwa alladhi khalaqa min al-ma'i basharan fajalahu nasaban wa sihra nasaban wa sihra 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for you or created you both uh, in relationship in terms of blood and in-laws, meaning when you marry someone else, then you are related to them. So this is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Wa So this person understands what it means to be family. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this, um, Imam Ibn Qayyim and uh, uh, Imam uh, Al-Qurtubi and other scholars in Islam, they highlight this fact. They say that a person is of value once they understand what family means. Once you understand who your uncles are, who your uh, aunties are, who your cousins are, who your family is, the people that are directly linked to you, your siblings, your father, your mother, this makes a person a person of character. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and as for the wall, فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ And as for the wall that uh, we fixed, excuse me, فَكَانَ <clears throat> لِغُلَامَيْنِ It was for two young boys. In the tafsir, the scholars, they say, it was a young boy and a young girl. يَتِيمَيْنِ That were orphans. Fil Madinati. Wakana Tahtahu underneath this wall Kanzullahuma. Uh, it was there was a treasure on, on underneath this wall. There was a treasure underneath this wall. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wakana Abu Huma Saliha. And there's many points here. First of all, the kans that is mentioned here, the scholars in Islam, they say the treasure was the treasure of not uh, as Ibn, uh, Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas, he says this treasure was not gold and silver, but rather it was suhuf ilm. It was scrolls of knowledge. So Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, speaks of knowledge as if it is treasure. So this is one point. Another point is And their father was a person that was righteous. The scholars in Islam, the tafsir, they say that this father was not their uh, father that uh, was married to their mother, but it goes back six generations. The great, 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 great grandfather. So this shows us that if you are good as a person, not only do you benefit, but your grand grandchildren down the line, they benefit as well. So when Allah says, وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا This benefits generations to come. فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهُمَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَ كَنْزَهُمَا وَرَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy he wanted to bring forth this uh, mercy uh, this uh, treasure for them as a mercy and then notice here Khidr alayhi salam what does he say and this is one of the things that the scholars in Islam they say this is evidence that he was not a a uh, a pious person, but he was a Nabi. He says, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي And I did not do this uh, by myself or by my command. Meaning that whatever he did was by the command of Allah. And who are the people that follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most? It is the Anbiya. So many of the scholars, because of this, they say, uh, Khidr alayhi salam was a Nabi. Ma lam alayhi sabara. So there, there's a lot of more points that we can mention in this uh, short pa passage, but inshallah we'll leave it until uh, next week, bi'idhnillah, and we'll stop it here, bi'idhnillah. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.